GitHub Copilot is one of the cheapest agentic tools on the market right now. But honestly, it's kind of a disaster. And I'm going to go through why I believe that and give you some evidence to kind of back up my claim here. So one thing that's true is every time I put out a video about any agent decoding tool, anytime I talk about cost or amount of money I'm spending, there is inevitably some comments on my video like this where people will say, well, Copilot's $10. How is this better than that? And it's a very fair question because... $10 a month for Copilot, that's really cheap. It's basically a, a, a single lunch, if you can even get a lunch for that amount now. But the honest truth is the quality difference between Copilot and the other agent tech tools is just out of this world. The amount of bugs and weird things that happen in Copilot when you use it. For example, you will just get this weird thing where your, your chat goes blank and you have to like scroll up to see anything. So over here on the left, there is a lot of chat above the fold. You have to scroll way up to find it, and then it starts flickering in and out. And this is very repeatable. I can get the I get this, you know, one out of three times when I'm using GitHub Copilot. Then you have the other issues where it just doesn't even see results from the terminal. And this also happens quite often. So it has trouble, like it'll run a console command or terminal command. And say like, hey, I didn't see any visible output when it's very clear there's visible output there. So it has trouble reading different commands. Now I'm using git bash here. It seems to happen very often with git bash, uh, but it also happens in regular Windows terminal. Uh, in bash, I've had it happen in Linux as well. And the amount of times that I get 502s which I'm assuming is rate limited, is just blows my mind. Like, I literally get this. If I tried to do anything in Copilot, uh, which if you go back a few months ago, Copilot was one of my one main agents. I ran it every day, but it got worse and worse. I started getting more 502s. And today when I was putting together this video, I was running some tests, which I'll talk to you about the results here in a minute, 502s. And it's unbelievable to me that this is a thing that I have to worry about uh, with very light usage even. I should not be having these kinds of API failures. And I believe it's me getting rate limited, which I'll talk about in a second. The main problem, the main reason I quit using GitHub Copilot Agent is it is so freaking slow. And if you're out there and you're using GitHub Copilot Agent, you may not realize how slow it actually is until you use a different tool. It is painfully slow. And I, I felt it. It went from being snappy and fast to more rate limited to slower and slower and slower. And it is just painfully, painfully slow. So I'm going to show you some timing tests that I did using VS Code, the latest extension as of May 5th, 2025. I'm using Claude 3.7 Sonnet non-thinking. That's all you can use in the agent mode anyway, but I'm also comparing it against root code, uh, Claude code, and augment code. And those are all also using Claude 3.7. Same exact prompt, and I'm also eval scoring it just for quality output. Uh, so all the tests that I'm talking about here have a very similar eval score. So the quality of them is about the same. So how slow? This is just copilot uh, times. So the first attempt I ran, it was nearly 18 minutes, 18 minutes. And it sat forever on editing or changing or diffing files. Like it was absolutely atrocious. The second attempt was a little bit faster, a little over 13 and a half minutes, still painfully slow. And then the third attempt ended up a little over 15 minutes, which again, if we were to average this out, which I'll, I'll show the averages here in a minute, it's still just unacceptable for the complexity of this prompt that I was giving it. So how does that compare against root code, Claude code, and augment code? It's night and day difference, but root code averaged a little over seven minutes. Claude code actually had one attempt where it was just over six minutes. Augment code also had some in the six minute. It's between six and seven and eight minutes seems to be about the normal time. The best run I got with GitHub Copilot was over 13 minutes, double the time. 
And time is money. Like, I, I don't have time to wait to see something fail. Like, speed is very important. And these are all using Claw 3.7 Sonnet. So that means to me, like, we are getting highly throttled. There is something seriously going on here that is limiting GitHub Copilot from being as snappy as it was back just a few months ago. So here's the total time. So running those three attempts, if you add it up, you can kind of see the total time on the blue bar and then the average time in the red bar. And it's nearly double the, the time. Like it's true code, cloud code, augment code, all very close across the board. Augment code actually surprisingly kind of edged out on speed, but it's only three samples. Regardless of that, it's like probably, you know, probably would be, if I did a hundred, they would probably be about the same. So anyway, it is unbelievable to me that 48 minutes, almost 48 minutes of time to run those three tests versus 23 minutes for root code and, and cloud code and less than that for even augment code. But if you go back to February 7th, they had just released the Insider Edition of Agent. It was fast. I wasn't being rate limited. It worked incredibly well. Editing and diffing was very quick. It, it just... It was night and day different. Like, I am so disappointed that it went from something that I use literally every day for about a month and a half to I can't even stand it anymore. And I hate saying this. And I know it for those of you that are out there that probably are big fans of GitHub Copilot because of the price. I mean, I get it. But speed is just a big factor to me. A massive, massive factor to me. And it is so incredibly slow that I find it kind of unusable on my day to day. Like I can't wait 20 minutes when I can actually get the job done in seven or six sometimes. It, it's crazy to me. Not only that, they are increasing pricing and re releasing this new pricing scheme that they have. This kicks in in just a couple days. I highlighted premium requests here because nowhere can I find what the heck a premium request actually is? I asked AI to search for it, and the best answer I got is that it's messages you type in and tool calls, but I cannot find any documentation about if it's a tool call or if it's just chat messages you go in. If this pricing change includes tool calls, this is going to be the worst. It's going to be awful. I'm just going to be totally honest with you. So my hope is that this is just chat messages that go in. So without that information, I can't really judge one way or another. But what I can kind of go through is what this pricing will look like. So again, looking at premium request, request here, per month on Copilot Pro, which is what I will be on, I get 300 per month. And for $10, maybe that's not the worst deal, actually, unless that is tool call related. And you could go up to... Copilot Pro Plus for $39 a month, and you get $1,500 per month. But if it runs at the speed that I get now, I would never, never pay $39 a month. And I'm not even going to pay the $10 per month because it's just not good enough anymore. And you can purchase additional premium requests at $0.04 cents per request. Again, if this is per tool call, which I have a sneaking suspicion that it is, if I don't see it clarified anywhere, I don't think this is going to be worth $10 a month anymore. I'm just going to be totally honest with you. And I can kind of give you a reason for that because that one test that I did, I counted the number of tool calls that this did, assuming every edit and read and everything is a tool call. It would be 23 calls. The positive side is it's so freaking slow. I'm probably not going to burn through my credits very quickly. But in this particular case, in one run of 18 minutes, I would have burned 23 premium requests. That is an absolutely insane amount. Now, on the flip side, if this was just one premium request, which is highly doubtful in my mind, uh, then I think it's probably reasonable to continue paying $10 a month, just to be totally honest with you. Even if it's slow and if this is all you can afford, I mean, I would use it. The quality of code it puts out is fine. It's good. It's just as good, actually, as the other, the other agentic tools.
So jumping into it a little bit more, um, I clicked in to look at this rate limit set here. So this is in chat mode. On Pro, I do not get increased GitHub model rate limit. Which I was like, okay, what is it? Maybe that's why I'm running slow. Like maybe if I went to get Copilot Pro, it would go quicker. But again, this is in chat pricing, not agent pricing. So anyway, I wanted to click, click into that and see what it meant. And then I looked at this and I was like, Copilot Pro, I get 150 requests per day. I get 8,000 tokens in and 4,000 out. That is very, very low. And I, and I was, I was just thinking about this, like you go to high, which honestly, I couldn't even figure out which models are high or low. I'm assuming all the big frontier ones are high. I get 50 chats per day, two concurrent requests, 8,000 tokens in 4,000 out. What in the world? Like that is that is super nerfed. And I know they have to do this for pricing, but it only increases when I go to Copilot Enterprise. Because then I get 16,000 in and 8,000 out, but I don't even get that on the low reasoning or the low rate limit tier models. So I I don't know like is what these rate limits mean and then do I get, how much more do I actually get um, speed wise? Because, you know, it's it, the, the limits look kind of the same between Copilot Pro and Copilot Business. It's, I would assume I would get like something faster or, or more context or something. It's also possible maybe this page just hasn't been updated with their new pricing when you link to it. So I don't know. It is absolutely a mess right now trying to figure out what their new pricing is actually going to be. And then if you try to look into like what low and high uh, tier limit, uh, the rate limit tiers are, it tells you to go look in the GitHub marketplace with no link. It's like, what the heck is a GitHub marketplace for models? I don't even understand. So I tried finding that with no luck. I, I have no clue what's going on. Uh, over here at Microsoft. I feel like they went from having an amazing, easy to understand, fast tool to kind of a complete disaster now. But it's not all bad. I do want to close it out on a little bit of a positive note. It's free. I don't know if this is going to continue, you know, in a few days here, but the Copilot Pro is free for students. That is actually really nice and really good. I appreciate that they're doing that. The quick fix, uh, the context to where so basically if you have an error in your ID and be able to right click and say quick fix and co-pilot is actually really nice. I like that. Uh, it's one of the things that I, uh, I used to use a lot and it still works very well, but Augment, I've started to use that one pretty much solely now. They also have a bring your own key. So you can bring in your own Anthropic key or OpenAI key, and that's a super nice addition. I actually think that is a huge huge plus for them uh, because it allows them to kind of give people the freedom to use their own API calls if they want versus using the premium request for GitHub Copilot. And they're still getting that revenue, that monthly revenue there uh, because you still got to pay for the subscription. And they do support more than one model. You know, Augment Code, they only have really, you can't switch models at all. In GitHub Copilot, you can, you are limited on what you can change, especially in agent mode. So it's not like a free for all, uh, but they do give you a lot more options. And the final thing is that one of the most important things, the quality of the code is good. I ran evals on the stuff Copilot did. It scored just as high as any of the other agent tech tools. So it does a good job coding. It's just been nerfed so much, uh, particularly on the speed side, if I go back here, that it's just become unusable to me. If I'm getting the same quality, at half the speed, it's just, it, there's no reason for me to not use a different tool. Um, I was actually very amazed with how consistent root code was in its timings, like within a couple seconds each time. Clog code, on the other hand, seemed to be a little bit more sporadic based on if it failed, you know, diffing or tool calling or something like that. All right, so I think I'm gonna end the video there. That is the reason that I do not use GitHub Copilot anymore and why I don't talk about, about it very much anymore. And for anyone that is a huge fan of it, I'm sorry, 
This is my own personal opinion on it. And if you have other thoughts or other opinions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I also get that sometimes, you know, you might be new in your career or you might be in a place where $10 a month is what you can afford to pay. It's absolutely, totally fine. It's just not for me anymore. And I actually think they're going to struggle keeping up if they don't get their acting gear uh, with some of the others that are just, I think, kicking their butt right now. Anyway, if you happen to make it this far and wouldn't mind considering liking the video and subscribing, I would appreciate it. Until next time, everyone. Peace out.